Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Let us discuss Cabbages, Kings, Fable Anniversary, PC Ports, and HD Remakes, shall we? That sounds like a good idea. Fable Anniversary popped up on the Xbox 360 a while or so ago and has recently arrived on PC. So, of course, expectations on PC were fairly high, considering Fable The Lost Chapters was an excellent PC version of the original Fable, adding new content as well as things like mouse-driven interface and much higher resolution assets. It, it's good, and it still is good to this very day. So, with Fable Anniversary coming along, expectations are understandably fairly high, and you're about to be very disappointed by what you're going to see. I'm going to do a couple of comparisons as we go through this, and I'm going to be showing you features, and we're also going to just be talking about the notion of HD Remake. So, it's part port report, and it's part a little bit of a ramble on what exactly you as a consumer should perhaps expect from an HD remake and what perhaps is reasonable. Let's have a look at the options. Takes a little while to get here because they went a little bit OTT with all of the menu animations and so on and so forth. Takes a good few seconds to actually get to the menu. First thing you're going to notice is there's no mouse cursor. That's because there's no mouse control in any of the menus in the game. This is actually a significant problem and I'll show you why that is once we have a look at the inventory system which they have inexplicably changed for Anniversary versus the system that was available in Lost Chapters. If we head over to the Options menu, which requires us to uh, tap the cursor keys and hit the A and B buttons to go backwards and forwards. So that's a little bit of Nintendo Entertainment System nostalgia there. Don't worry, we only have a D-pad with four buttons, and then you've got your forward and back. That's pretty much it. Not, not brilliant, is it? Audio options, very, very simple. Not much to find here, frankly. Just separate sliders with... You know, just a couple of different increments available, which of course all have to be manipulated with the cursor keys. Camera options, these were also available in the original bow camera, normal and inverted camera for the game, normal and inverted as well as a brightness slider. Control options, control scheme, traditional, Fable 2 and 3 inspired, and keyboard and mouse. Now what Anniversary does have is support for controllers, which Fable The Lost Chapters did not. Although what is curiously missing from this menu right here is, of course, key rebinding. Now, that is available in the game, it's just not available from the main menu for some reason. Gameplay options. You can turn things like Guildmaster help on and off. You can turn your tutorials on and off, which is nice if you already know the game since it plays exactly the same as the original. Character highlights can be turned on and off and you can mess around with the opacity of the interface, although not the size of the interface. The interface is scaled a little bit better for 16 by 9 resolutions this time around. In the original game, even though you had access to 16 by 9 resolution, the interface wouldn't generally scale, so on some monitors at some high resolutions you'd notice that things like the minimap were quite small. I personally didn't have a problem with that, but some people did complain. Oh, I accidentally went backwards, that's not what I was intending to do. Let's have a look at advanced options, this is where all of the visual options can be found. So you got resolution, which goes up to 1080p and presumably higher on a higher resolution monitor. Full screen on or off, V-Sync on or off. I would not turn this on unless you like 60 frames per second over 120. So if you're running on a 60 hertz monitor, the V-Sync is fine because it V-Syncs to 62, I believe, or around 60. It was claiming, at least on my frame rate monitor, that it was at 62 frames per second when I hit the V-Sync. So it's pretty much 60. Otherwise, the game runs much, much faster than that and much higher than that. So I turned V-Sync off and was able to attain solid 120 FPS in almost all areas that I've tr checked out so far, which admittedly is not that many. I did notice some frame drops, however, in the starting town, which was a bit weird. In fact, there was a lot of frame variation there. But once I got to the academy, everything seemed to be fine. Geometry, LOD distance and then your shadow distance as well, and landscape LOD distance, and anisotropic filtering, and that's it. What is missing? Um, AA, strangely enough. There's no anti-aliasing option here, which is very odd considering the original game had an anti-aliasing option and benefited greatly from it. Now, the game seems to have some sort of FXAA going on, that is the fast approximate anti-aliasing, which doesn't look very good, and in fact the game has a very noticeable blur over pretty much everything, which could be to do with FXAA. Many people say if you have the option between no AA and FXAA, you go with no AA, because FXAA can have some... Would I say subjectively? Yeah, I suppose I would. Some subjectively negative impact on the visuals itself. So, lacking a little bit, you would think that there would be a lot of options here, and in fact there are actually less graphics options than the original had is not too brilliant, I have to say. Alright, I'm going to show you a couple of little comparisons, and I'm also going to 
tell you a little bit about the real problems that this version of the game actually has, and then we will discuss some of the pros and cons, and of course whys and wherefores, of HD remakes in the first place. Alright, as with any port report, we should really start by looking at things like rebindable keys. Does the game have them? Now, in the main menu it doesn't, which is a little bit strange. However, if you get into the game itself, there are rebindable keys available. The problem with the rebindable key menu is that it's not very good. It's missing a great deal of actual keys that are used in the game. Some of them are vitally important. Compared to Fable the Lost Chapters, the key rebinding menu is not very good because it lacks the ability to rebind a lot of the keys. You'll see to the right hand side of the menu, there are some keys that are locked there, but conspicuous by their absence are rather important keys like attack and block and flourish. In the original version, you could rebind all of these keys. In this version, they have done things like bind both block and dodge to the same button, that being middle mouse button. That is not a button I particularly like to use outside of a scroll wheel. The reason is that I use a Logitech G9X, and it has a particularly stiff middle mouse button. So if I am having to repeatedly click that in, I tend to find that annoying and prefer to rebind it to either a keyboard key or one of the buttons on the side of my mouse. I don't have the option to do that. So you've got combined key functionality, which was not the case within Fable The Lost Chapters, because in Lost Chapters you could separate those buttons out. As you can clearly see on the screen right here, I can change block, I can change dodge, I can change my attack buttons, I could put attack on the keyboard if I so desire, or I can bind it to the mouse. This is a clear downgrade from Fable The Lost Chapters, and causes a number of problems. I don't think it would be unreasonable to claim that this is the way that it is because this was a port from the 360, which was designed to be used with a controller. It seems like the key rebinding menu has very much been an afterthought, and so has the default key scheme in the first place. I've told you this before, binding multiple functions to one button on a keyboard and mouse is in many cases pretty stupid and is not the sign of a good port. There are plenty of games that work just fine with some of the shared functionality. This version of Fable is not one of them. There is absolutely no need to bind block and dodge to the same button. They are different functions. Binding them to middle mouse button is particularly silly. Now, let's move on to the inventory screen. This is one of the most jarring changes that you will find in Fable Anniversary Edition, and it is to the detriment of the PC version of the game. Now, in the original, as you can see on the screen right here, you had a little bit of an awkward but otherwise fairly functional mouse-driven inventory system, which allowed you to navigate your inventory with relative ease. It wasn't perfect. I think some of the categorization was needlessly inaccurate, and they could have done a better job with that, but it it did the job. It was reasonable. I would have liked to see a nice big list, which allowed you to list everything that you had, but again, it's not too shabby. However, now we move on to Fable Anniversary's inventory system, and it was designed by aliens. That is the only assumption that I can possibly come up with. This inventory system is bollocks. Why? Well, one, it doesn't have mouse control which is something that you would think would be fairly key to an inventory system, especially when you have a lot of items. It means that you don't have to hammer the key over and over and over again to get where you need to go. Secondly, it uses some bizarre keys to navigate. Now, you'll notice to the left and right hand side of the inventory screen, it's asking you to press things like insert, delete, home and end. That is how you control the inventory screen. Insert and home will move the top row left and right, and then delete and end will move the bottom row of tabs left and right. This is ludicrously fiddly, and of course would have been fixed very, very easily with mouse control. Now, would you like me to rub the salt in a little bit more? Because I can. Here's a direct quote from one of the developers who names himself Oman on the forums for Fable Anniversary Edition on Steam. Here is his quote, and here is me reading it. We would have loved to add mouse support to the menu, but we reached a point in the project where it was either going to be modding support or adding features such as mouse support in the menus. We chose modding. We chose modding. Okay. Over basic PC functionality, stuff that is in any good PC game ever, we decided that modding was a good idea. Not only that, but while it might sound great that they have enabled modding, what they really mean by modding is the ability to alter art and animation assets. If you want to put items into the game, you can't. If you want to change quests and add real content, 
you can't. It's hard to view this as anything more than an excuse, a false dichotomy. This is the sort of option that should be available by default in PC games. Modding support, and don't get me wrong, I'm a PC gamer, I love modding, it's fantastic, it's one of the advantages of this platform, but if it was actually a choice between mouse support and proper menus and modding, I would take mouse support and proper menus any day of the week. But again, I still think that's a false dichotomy, it's nonsense. It is just an excuse, unless the budget for the PC version was absolutely threadbare, which I'm, by the way, willing to believe that it was, then under no circumstances should the developer have had to make that decision. And even if he did, the choice is obvious. But what about where the game's actually improved? Well, all of the effort seems to have been put in to remastering the audio and remastering the visuals of the game. They're claiming things like improved texture quality, improved shadows, improved lighting. It's fairly hard to argue with the improvements. They are there. They are objectively better in terms of either texture resolution, shadow quality, or lighting quality. It's hard to argue with that stuff. However, it is very easy to argue that the improvement is not good enough to justify the $35 price tag. There are plenty of gnarly textures in this game, even in very obvious areas where, frankly, they should have polished it up immediately. This right here is the image of a rather large door that you can find in the starting town. Doesn't look particularly good, does it? No, it does not. And yes, it does look better than Fable Lost Chapters, but that game also came out nine years ago, so that's to be expected. It's not a good enough improvement as far as I'm concerned, and it brings the elephant in the room right into focus, the fact that this is a port of a port. Yeah, it is a port of the Xbox 360 version of this game, which in turn was a port from either the Xbox, the original Xbox, or the PC. Now, of course, the Lost Chapters content was made available in the 360 version of Fable Anniversary. It's hard to know which direction they ported in, I couldn't tell you. That kind of texture resolution and quality is perhaps acceptable if you happen to game on a 360. It's not acceptable if you game on a PC. And even if it were, you're still being asked to pay $35 for the privilege of seeing that. Now, subjectively, I would say that I don't actually like the new aesthetic all that much. I feel particularly that the facial definition of the characters in the original was a lot clearer, it was less muddy, and I don't like the fact that the entire game seems to be swimming in a sea of blur. The quality and the resolution of the textures in the original is clearly inferior to Fable Anniversary. However, aesthetically speaking, I think that the game still looks better, simply because it's clearer and sharper. I can't say that I'm particularly keen on the redesign of the faces of the characters as well, particularly the young boy hero looks a bit like a mutant, whereas the hero in Lost Chapters had a nice bright facial definition, a clear character. All of that is of course entirely subjective and feel free to disagree with me on that. But the point that I would like to make based on this information is this. It would seem that Fable Anniversary is asking for $35 for some fairly questionable visual improvements and downgrades in PC functionality. And that's where I have a real problem. There's a couple of other minor problems as well that I feel are probably just me. There are people reporting crash bugs. My wife just had the game crash, forcing it to restart her computer. I've had sound issues, which caused the game to gradually distort my sound the longer I had it loaded up. Although I haven't read of any of that on the forum. So that would seem to be an isolated incident that is restricted to my particular interface, which is fairly unusual for gamers. Most people don't own an RME babyface. They don't need to own something like that because they don't do a lot of recording, yet I do. That said, I have not encountered in my recent memory any games that have done anything like that whatsoever. And of course, I did test by restarting the game, restarting my computer, and the same issues do eventually crop up, although they take a little bit of time to really get going. That said, plenty of people are reporting sound cutouts in cutscenes and things like that. I did experience that when I first loaded the game and attempted to watch the first cutscene, which was little more than deafening silence. Little issues like the inability to change your mouse sensitivity in-game and having to go diving into the .ini files in order to do that simply indicates that this was not a PC port that was particularly well thought out. And it's asking for $35. And I don't think it's worth it. Here's the thing. 
How relevant exactly is Fable Anniversary Edition on PC? I know a lot of people asked for it, but how relevant is it, really? Can Fable The Lost Chapter still be played? Yes. Does it work on modern operating systems? Yes. Does it support modern resolutions? Yes. Is it entirely playable with mouse and keyboard? Yes. It is. All of these things are true. I had no problem going back and playing Fable The Lost Chapters. Do I miss the graphical upgrades of Fable Anniversary? Honestly, not really, because they're not good enough to really blow my mind. Fable The Lost Chapters was a pretty good looking game back in the day, and it still holds up pretty well to this day. There's nothing in there that I would look at and go, oh, hideous, terrible. You know, the occasional texture on the wall is not going to drive me away there. But nine years on from that particular release, if you are expecting me to pay $35 to play your game again, then I expect better. And is that reasonable? I would say so. It seems to me that outside of the obvious visual upgrades, the only reason to buy and play this game on PC is if you like to game with a controller, because Fable The Lost Chapters did not have support for that, and it's obvious that the interface for Anniversary has been designed with a controller in mind. If, however, you like to play on mouse and keyboard, which, by the way, was entirely fine during Fable The Lost Chapters, I beat the game with it and had no problems whatsoever using the interface they provided me, then this is a downgrade a downgrade that is more than three times the price. The HD remake is really only something that console users would find relevant, because of course, those machines are not backwards compatible. You can't play the original Fable on an Xbox 360. More specifically, you can play it, but it won't play very well. As you're probably aware, the Xbox 360 can play some original Xbox games, but Fable The Lost Chapters has huge problems, as does the original Fable. If for some reason you didn't play Fable The Lost Chapters version, you played the original version only on Xbox, because they did release both, then perhaps it's worth buying on Xbox 360 to play through it again with the additional content and the obvious visual improvements. And that's a decent jump from the original on the Xbox. The thing is that Lost Chapters looked a lot better than the Xbox version on PC, as you might imagine, so the jump is a lot smaller. But here's perhaps the biggest thing. Is there a reason to create an HD remake of Fable on PC when we already have a perfectly functional Fable The Lost Chapters? And I think the answer to that is probably no. Older games, and by that I mean much older, can justify an HD remake, especially if you need to add new functionality to the game. This is particularly pertinent when you have, say, a poor PC port in the first place. It's an opportunity to get a much better version onto the system. There are some strong arguments to be made for things like Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition because it was a much, much older game and it has its own problems. This is especially true when games by default only render at 4 by 3 aspect ratio, so you want something that's widescreen, but Fable Lost Chapters rendered at 16 by 9 no problem at all outside of the initial main menu, which for some reason renders at a smaller resolution. The entire game otherwise can be played in 1080p with no problems at all. It is also not a full reimagining like, say, Tomb Raider Anniversary Edition, which is an excellent reimagining of the original Tomb Raider. I think it's more accurate to call it an HD remaster as opposed to an HD remake. A Tomb Raider Anniversary Edition was a remake, whereas this is a remaster. Something like Last of Us is a remaster. But Last of Us on PS4 has a real purpose because it was released towards the end of the lifespan of the PlayStation 3 and performs very poorly as a result, to the point where I personally find it unplayable with frame rates dropping below 30 constantly. However, on PlayStation 4, it runs at a nice 60 with a better controller. It's a much, much better experience. This is a worse experience. The improvements, some of which, by the way, are very subjective, do not compensate for the poorer functionality. They do not compensate for an inferior playing experience, which is exactly what Anniversary offers compared to Fable The Lost Chapters. It really is as simple as that. And if your Anniversary or HD remaster or whatever happens to fall into that trap, then I have to say, it's not a good remaster. And Fable Anniversary is not, as far as I'm concerned, on PC. What it has got me to do is reinstall the Lost Chapters and maybe do another playthrough of that, because that game was alright. And I can use the mouse in it, and I can rebind my keys, and not be horribly frustrated whenever I open the inventory screen. And also it doesn't crackle, so there's that. Hmm. Yeah.
I would say that Fable Anniversary on PC is little more than a cash grab, and as a direct result, I point you in the direction of the $10 bargain that is Fable The Lost Chapters, which is still good to this day. My name's been Total Biscuit, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.